Major topic of discussion that you'll see crop up over and over among us in board game dorks and nerds is the debate of mechanics over theme. Which is more important, mechanics of a game or the theme of a game? Personally, I'm really impressed by games where the theme and the mechanics are so closely knit together that you couldn't have one without the other. Now there are plenty of games, and honestly you could pretty much, if you thought hard enough, could re-theme most games, but there are some games where the mechanics wouldn't be as intuitive and wouldn't make as much sense without the theme that it was given. Sometimes it's painfully obvious that the theme informed the mechanics in such a way that you couldn't have one without the other. Games like that actually really impressed me. Today on the show we're going to talk about one game that does exactly that and does it exceedingly well. Peeling the layers of reality is a lonely endeavor I am starting to fully understand here in the mountains of Colorado. I feel a great burden of responsibility when I discover something new and have no one to share it with. A reporter once came for a niche publication regarding spectral beings and asked me about spirits. I am not sure I provided the answer he sought, but I have continued to ponder the nature of the word spirit. I think we all embody spirit now and again. I have embraced the spirit of discovery. I am not the only one. Countless others have also understood its importance. I see mankind entering a future, both exciting yet troubling. I long to seek out our greatest minds, bring them together in a way that would be interesting to the common man. Not some stuffy room where we attempt to outwit and impress but in a way that the average mind would be able to understand the wonders we see before us and to fully observe our own daily realities. Like Shakespeare, we will present these concepts to the common people and will be celebrated for doing so. To fellow scientists, inventors, shapers of the future, to colleagues and even bitter rivals, help me share the spirit that I have tried to avoid. The spirit of competition. Rather than an invitation, I submit to you a challenge. In the Swiss Alps, I have constructed a suitable field that will host a race for the ages. There we will gather our technologies, fine-tune our greatest works. Metal and gears and steam will meet, sparks will fly, whales will turn. And we will race into the future to the sound of thunderous uproar. Ready your vehicles and prepare to demonstrate your talents to the world. Steampunk Rally is a game for two to eight players and it was designed by Oren Bishop and published by Roxley Games. So the first couple of mechanics that I'm a sucker for that this game has card drafting and multi-use cards. First phase of the game is drafting, and the cards break down in two ways. Boost cards, which will give you some sort of one-time effect, and the machine part cards, which is what you use to make your invention. Machine parts either generate some sort of motion, generate more dice to activate more machine parts, or to help you easily expand your machine. As you draft these cards, you immediately add them to your contraption by connecting valves, and your machine will grow and lose parts over the course of the game, and you can move things around at any time. Also, cards have some dice or cogs listed on the top right, so that instead of using them as a machine part or stashing them for a boost later, you can simply just discard them for the amount shown. I found a lot of the time that's the main way you end up getting dice, so it's important to kind of weigh the decision as you're doing it. There's a lot of decisions to be made in this game. That's going to be the first one you're faced with. Do I use this card to be the machine part, or do I really need the dice that it's going to generate? So the dice are used in three different colors to activate your machine part. The dice you earn during the draft will make a pool and then be placed on a machine part card to activate them depending on their dice slots. You'll be using steam, heat, and electricity to power your invention and you can augment and re-roll those by spending cogs. And then the race phase, you'll roll all the dice that you earned in your pool and start activating machine parts. They'll be marked with what type of power they use next to their dice slots. 
You match them up and power your machine. You add up the pips you place and divide it by the number shown on the icon. And then of course, after discarding the remainder, the sum is how many times you get to earn that machine parts race effect. Now, I hate math. Some people are gonna hear that and go, I don't wanna do math. This is, this is a math game, who cares? But really, it's simple. You'll have a number, you think to yourself, how many times is that sum? How many times is that number inside of it? That's basically what it is. And then if that icon is a star rather than a number, you get the performance effect once, effectively making it a while. Parts will generate different types of movement. They'll give you more dice, make you take damage or heal damage, or gain cogs. Basically the real meat of the game is setting up your machine parts to chain up combos. You'll have parts that will give you dice that you'll be able to immediately use in other parts, or even cogs that you know you'll have to spend to activate other things. Um, a lot of it is you, you can't really plan ahead too much. I mean during the draft you can kind of start setting yourself up to what kind of dice you're going to need and stuff like that, but then you have to roll them. So it becomes this hectic thing of like, okay, this is the pool of things I can have. Okay, I can activate that, and then it'll do this, and then that will give me dice that I'll be able to roll, and then hopefully I'll get enough that I can activate this machine part, and you're looking ahead and trying to figure out, I need to bolster my defenses so I don't take so much damage that I have to lose a machine part. I definitely need to generate some movement so I can get ahead. What's gonna be the most important thing that I need during this match, and you're kind of eyeing up the position of everyone else because a lot of these phases you kind of do all at the same time, which is fun because then there's no downtime either. It really makes you feel like you're actually inventing a machine at the spur of the moment to participate in this race, all while taking damage and pieces of your machine have fallen off. And then the part of the game that kind of really kind of wrinkles your brain is the fact that once you place a dice on a machine part, it's stuck there until you vent it off. There's a phase of the game that you do after the first round where you spend cogs to reduce pips that's on those dice until they are at zero and then you can pull them off. Otherwise, they take up a dice slot and you can't use them in future rounds. So yeah, it's great you can drop a couple sixes that you rolled, generated four motion and pulled ahead of everyone, but now you need to figure out how to get those dice off so you can do it again. I mean, the things I love about this game, first, I love that you get to play as real inventors and scientists. They seem to all have their own personality and you can tell a lot of care went into bringing them to life. And I mean that nearly literally because one of the inventors that wasn't alive in the time period of this game is Ada Lovelace, but they explain in the rulebook in a really clever and fun way. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but it's it's pretty neat. Secondly, even though it mashes up a lot of mechanics, which sometimes can kind of feel forced in games, they inform the theme so well, it, nothing seems out of place, and usually it all makes sense. I mean, the theme absolutely goes with the gameplay, and when that happens in games, it's like it's magical. It's always gonna be my favorite thing in games when because of the logic of the theme, it makes the mechanics make more sense. And then finally, it supports eight players. Honestly, it's rare to find a non-party game that can do that, so kudos to them. Uh, the one negative I can think about is teaching this game doesn't really make much sense, and you can tell as you're saying things about how the game works, it's going right over people's heads. Um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I always feel like in games where there's drafting, the players are gonna be lost no matter what, and it's always good to kind of do like a practice throwaway round, because you're not going to know how to use those cards until you actually play a round of it. Uh, it. It's honestly not a complicated game, for some reason nothing really makes sense until you play a round. But because this is a race, my suggestion is you can play a practice round and call it, like make it like a time trial, and then whoever ends up getting the furthest, you use that to determine first player. I mean, honestly, Steampunk Rally is is a fantastic game. I highly suggest you go pick it up. Thanks for watching. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Give me a favor. Hurry. Tell people about the show if you like it. I enjoy doing it. Um, I'll see you guys later.